This is Sailor the Piper Man, Piper the Sailor Man. Here it's about midnight. About to sleep a little early. Just woke up now. Going in here smoking Seven Seas Royal. Really like it. Gotta give me another one. And, um, French roast coffee. It was a tough day. It was a tough day. My wife got up early in the morning. She had to make, she had to make uh, reservations for her mother to be flown to be flown in from New York. We've been trying to get her to come. come to Puerto Rico for many many years now I've been in Puerto Rico since uh, 2005 and so we've been trying to get her to come out and she won't come out and she didn't want to live with us I mean, we had the room we had the space before I had this house I had another house up in the, in the mountains she didn't want to come. And when I first met my wife, 40 years ago, we were on our 39th anniversary, I looked at her and told her, you see, I had gone to her house when I met my wife at church, and I told her, walked up to her and said, you're going to be my wife. She had known my family five years. Prior to me ever meeting her, I was away in the military. And at that time I got stationed in 1982, 1981. I was stationed upstate at Glance Falls, nuclear power plant where we trained the, the submariners. And uh, I was doing short duty. I was doing about a year and a half two years of short duty there. They go in, work at the nuclear power plant, learn everything about nukes. And then we would have to check for radiation, do all their read-ups, make sure they were fine. You know, keeping track of, of the amount of radiation they're gonna be exposed to. When, when dealing with submariners is a whole, a whole different ball game. It's a whole, it's, it's like a whole different navy, really. The guys that are submariners are very special, uh, highly intelligent, and very patriotic. They're, they're unique, man. You know, in, in a certain in a certain way, they like the equivalent of of a SEAL team member psychologically. I mean, they got to go through so many tests because they're gonna be underwater. They're gonna live in tight compartments, so you have to have a certain mindset, willingness, and moderation. So when I met her there. I guess this is random thoughts because I'm already jumping home my my wife's mother-in-law to to getting her head that I'm talking about the nukes. I guess it's my willingness to to explain in detail. So I was stationed up there. I would go see. At the time, she was my girlfriend. When I met her, I asked her, "You know, I want to marry you." I went to Puerto Rico visit my grandmother. Came back, told her to think about it. 
And then I, I, I read of the, the riot act. And I told her, listen, I'm a man. I take charge. I'm responsible. I'm old fashioned. And I have the last word. She looked at me, what do you mean last word? Any final decisions, I make it. You know, she was 18 years old. And I was 24. I had been around the world twice. And she was just 19 years old. You know, I had never been out of New York. Basically, I basically I, I robbed the cradle. <laughs> to this day, they say that, but back then it was a different time. People, people still got married young, you know. And um, she met me. That was the best thing that was ever gonna come her way. She was living in a bad situation. Come marry me. I'm a good man. I treat you good. And um, she says, "Yeah, but you got to talk to my mother." So I, this is where mother-in-law comes in. So I'm going to a house. I did it old-fashioned way. I talked to the pastor. Told told the pastor her pastor, Protestant church why I was there, why I was coming to visit. I told her my intentions, that I come from Seattle, and I was being stationed there, uh, upstate, and I was gonna come down and visit her, and date her, so I wanted him to know. I wanted everybody to know. I didn't want her, if they saw me with her out in town, I don't like gossip, never liked the gossip. I wanted them to know what my intentions are. Oh, she's with a military guy, you know, thinking I'm I'm trying to get over her. So I told my mom, I said, I think I, I, think I found her, mom. I think I found her. We got to talking and told her I wanted four kids and the home. She goes, four kids? I want four kids, two boys and two girls. Where else get married? You're not going to have kids. What are you going to get married for? And she had his Christian value. We'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. So I went to see her mother. It comes down to I went to see her mother. Her mother didn't like me. For the color of my skin. They're, they're light-skinned Puerto Ricans. And they're dark-skinned Puerto Ricans. And they're Puerto Ricans. They're mixed. She did not like me one bit. Say, oh, you boy, you crazy to come to my house and ask my hand in marriage? And I told her, that's what we do. That's how we do it. I, I, I don't know where, what neck of the woods you from. When a man has his intentions, I was always taught by all my uncles to be stand-up guy, to let people know what your intentions were. So I'm asking your hand in marriage. I don't have to do this. <laughs> I don't have to ask your hand in marriage. She's old enough. But I thought that I would respect you. And and before before we, bro we, we we out of there, to let you know this is my intention, I'm gonna take care of your daughter, you know. And she, she never liked it, man. Never liked it. Just for the color of my skin. Just because I was dark skin. Same race of people, Puerto Ricans are all mixed. They didn't like me. Outside of the family, they didn't like me. To this day, the majority of them. Never spoke to them, never been around them. The mother came to live with us once or twice, but she never. So now, she's in her, she's 85, 
can't do for herself. And she needs to be taken care of. So I told told my wife Wanda, Wanda, I told you back when I met you that you the only one that's gonna be responsible for her. Ain't nobody ain't nobody in your side of the family give two cents about your mother. How can you say that? How do you know that? He says, I'm good at reading people. And I can tell you right now, your brothers and sisters and uncles and all that, right now she's fine. Well, when a person gets elderly, people change on them. They don't want to deal with elderly people. And I'm not like that. I respect elders. I enjoy being around elders. I value their wisdom, their knowledge, their know-how. And since from a little kid, didn't matter who you was. I had a lot of friends that were Russian, Czechoslovakians. When I used to play chess and sat out in the streets of New York, people from all walks of life, it didn't make a difference. I would respect them. That's lacking now. That's lacking now. I don't care what color skin you are. If you elder, you older than me. Oh, I'm gonna hell yeah. If you're a veteran and you're way older than me and you've been, I can talk to you and you know what it is like. And then you gotta live. You know, sir? I told my wife, let's go get her. Sooner or later, you're going to regret if you don't bring your mother and she die over there in New York. First of all, the authorities are going to speak about it. Second of all, your family, you being the closest to her, they're not going to forgive you. Third of all, they're going to blame me. <laughs> I saw that coming. I said, I got nothing against your mother. She's 85. I said, my mother's up in years. She's here. You've been good to her. I take care of, We take care of our elders. We don't just throw them to the side and put them in some home. Excuse me. If you're one that has, we're not like that. And there are many cultures that take care of their elders. Native American cultures, Latin American cultures, or Irish. We got, and then there are other cultures that you reach a certain age, they might as well commit euthanasia. I'm not like that. I don't take care of the kids. I take care of your elders. You know? And uh, he said, let's go get her. So yesterday was the day we had to bring it through the airport. Man, the disrespect this, this woman endured. It seemed like the young didn't care. We tried to get her from point A to point B. We asked for a wheelchair. We asked for guidance. And it was as if these young workers didn't give two cents. About elderly people, man. And we over here, we tra we're doing everything. We was before my daughter had to step in, go to the airport, take her, make sure she gets through security. Man, you don't want to be elderly having to go through security and the BS that they're putting elderly people that need to travel. It's terrible. No place to sit. You gotta walk these long things. So I told her, you know what you do? get a wheelchair, you get somebody, I don't care if I gotta pay. So we did that, she finally got here. She came out the car and looked at me with these sad eyes, man. Like, like she was saying, like, man, I've been hating you for all these years, and here I am, and you, and you have to take care of me. I said, man, welcome, you know? 
you're the you're the mother of my wife who's been the most important thing to me in this life the big greatest present i have how am i gonna mistreat you you gave me the best wife a man could ever have i don't care I don't care what you said, what you done way back then. You say I wouldn't become nothing. I was a nobody, no nothing. I mean, you know, there were some things she said to me that really hurt. Cause here she is at 85. Have to, having to rely on my wife and me. I told my wife, love her. Forget about the past. Right now, she needs a lot of love. She loved my dogs. I was happy about that. She's an she's a animal lover. So I'm happy. She, she won't treat my dogs. Got too hard. She was petting them. I said, that's good. That's good. So we, we set up a room with all, all everything that she, she needs and wants. She has a new adventure for me. You know? Dealing, dealing with someone that first hated me, and so I have to, I have to show her kindness and compassion. You know, I'm, I'm not too far away. I'm 64. I don't know how people gonna treat me. You ain't, we ain't gonna all stay young. And so we need to invest our time and energy. Uh, people, not just for ourselves, but be altruistic. You gonna be young. I know in maybe 15 years I won't be able to have the things I do now. I don't have the same eyes. I forget my memory. It's 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 messed up, you know. That's why it's important. I I take all my vitamin, amino acids, protein. Because I can eat food, and I got this hunger pain, and it's not really hunger pain. It's that my body's not being doesn't have the nutrients, so I have to take protein powder, mix it up. You know, it's come to that. It's come to that. I have to have more liquid than I do solid food, so my digestive digestive system isn't that great. And now that she's here, I feel really good. I feel really happy that I can help, help an elderly, she's going to be around, you know, and uh, if I need to make a coffee, make a coffee, make her feel good. I just pray that when it's my turn, somebody, God will put somebody in their way to, to treat me with kindness as they treat others. That's the, that's it. You know, it's like, so not only that, I get to talk about Jesus to her, to prepare her. We ain't gonna live here forever. We prepare her for the, the other side, you know? But she's active, she's attentive, she likes, she's got the radio on back there. And, and, and this is a new place she's ain't asleep and uh but i'm happy my brother was happy my brother went to the airport picked her up and i said i, I got it I gave, he knows what went down he says i got it man she's okay she's not that she's not that lady i can see the humbleness i can see her tired i can she's she feels comfortable around all the people now you know there are some things that we do when we young Later on in life, we regret. All the times I wanted to mend, if I would have done this, would that guy have survived? If I would have done the tourniquet faster or, or something? You know, everything, everything life's about making a decision, man. If you're not analytical, you don't know what that decision, the outcome of the decision is going to be. You know, so, I'm just glad 
I'm in the moment. I'm in the moment, and in this moment, I can help somebody. You know, I don't know about tomorrow, but for right now, I'm smoking. Drinking coffee, I'm alive and I'm counting my blessings. I say to the Piper Man, Piper the Sailor Man, you have a good one, you hear? You smoke up, enjoy every minute of every hour of your life. Smooth sailing.